Since it's what we're talking about today, okay. what do you reckon your favourite moment is in X-Men First Class? Wolverine's cameo. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lynch. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Within the context of the Marvel Universe, there exists a hierarchy of sorts that ranks various heroes against one another in terms of their ability to kick trucks into orbit or destroy people's brains with their mind. Ignoring celestial beings with untapped control over space and time, arguably one of the strongest and most versatile characters in the entirety of Marvel canon is a mutant Fox killed off within like five minutes of X-Men First Class. I'm guessing from that intro, we are talking about Darwin. Yes, um, so Darwin, if you didn't watch the film or you don't read comics, is a Marvel mutant with the ability of instantaneous adaptation, which is comic speak for he adapts to survive. Like, you know, to crib a line from his, like, you know, his movie counterpart. Darwin's already a nickname and, you know, sort of fits. Adapt to survive and all. Yeah, adapts to everything. Yes. No matter what happens to him. Yeah, everything, except for having a marble put in his mouth, apparently. But we'll get, we'll get to that, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Yeah. So you've said what his power is, mm -hmm. but can we have some examples of what he can actually do? Oh yeah, well there's um, a few examples I can think off the top of my head. In one comic, he encounters a wall of lasers that could cut through like, you know, the testicles of an iron giraffe, and his body reacts to that by making him intangible, so he can walk straight through them. Uh, in another comic, he gets thrown off a cliff, and his body turns to stone, so he doesn't get hurt. And in yet another one, he gets attacked by about 80 flamethrowers, and his body responds to that by making him flamethrower proof. In short though, it's a fairly useful mutant ability to have, because it allows him to survive near enough anything that could potentially kill him or even cause him harm. That just sounds a bit overpowered to me now. Yeah, it is a bit overpowered, isn't it? The ability to survive anything. The weakness that Darwin has is that he doesn't actually have any real control over how his power decides to manifest. Ah. And like, the famous example of that is in the comics, he tries to fight the Hulk to stop him. And he's expecting, of surely my mutant powers will make me as strong as the Hulk or stronger than him so I can incapacitate him. And no, what his powers do instead is give him the ability to teleport and teleport him as far away from the Hulk as possible. <laughs> Which if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because his power is defensive in nature, not offensive. So it makes sense that, oh, I'm not going to get the ability to be as strong as the Hulk. I'm just going to get the ability to survive whatever he throws at me. So rather than do that, I'm just going to teleport away. Can he only manifest one at a time? Um, he can do multiple. It depends. Obviously, he adapts to survive. So if the scenario calls for it, he will adapt to it. Um, I think my absolute favourite example of this is where he gets infected with this toxin that is described as attacking the central nervous system and his mutant ability, rather than like, you know, expelling a toxin from his body or giving him the ability to survive, um, makes him evolve into a, like, a living walking sponge man because sponges don't have a nervous system. That's the weakness of his ability because obviously it's it's powerful in the sense that you can't kill him, but because he only has marginal control over it, the writers can have a lot of fun with it and just make it manifest in ways he doesn't expect for, like, you know, with amusing results. So, in that case, what are the upper limits of his power? Like, where does it stop? We don't actually know. And in, like, the Marvel hierarchy, they've got these things called power rankings, and it's, like, strength, speed, intelligence, like, energy projection, fighting skill, that sort of thing. And, like, Darwin has the potential to be more powerful than anyone in terms of all of these, depending on the situation that he's in. And I think the most ridiculous, like, example of what his powers can do is when he encounters Hela, the goddess of death, who, if you remember from Thor Ragnarok, possesses sufficient strength to crush Mjolnir, a hammer forged from the heart of a dying star, with her bare hands. So what does the comic version of Hela do to Darwin, like, which you've seen is an example of his power being amazing? Um, she lightly touches him. Ooh. Yeah, I should point out like, in the comics though, um, as the goddess of death, um, any touch from Hela instantaneously kills any living creature, which, which Darwin is. And to think like we've got Hela, a goddess of death, like, you know, the physical manifestation of a metaphysical concept that exists in that universe. And you've got Darwin, a guy with defective genes. Who's gonna win? Darwin wins. Because what his mutant ability then does is evolves him into a god of death himself, giving him all the abilities of Hela and thus the ability to survive her touch. And then he uses those abilities to like snatch her cloak off her and becomes the god of death. Yeah, comics are dumb, but I think that more than anything sums up like, you know, how ridiculous like this guy is in the comics. Like he is a mutant, he is a living mortal man who has de like the defective X gene, and like, you know, in the, what do you see him do in the movie? Oh, I can stick my head in a fish tank and not, like, not die. In the comics, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe 
with Hela. He's going toe to toe with the goddess of death and he survives her ultimate ability by just walking that shit off. I love how with the format of the way our videos work, there's now people watching going, we can see exactly where this is going. Yes, <laughs> yes you can. But before that, what we're going to do is um, talk about the movie version of Hela because I was like surprised to find this out. In the comics, I don't think she has the ability to summon weapons from nowhere. She didn't have that ability and they borrowed it off another like person in Marvel canon because they thought it looked cool. And I like the idea of a movie like Turbo Kate Blanchett has got Virgil from Devil May Cry's power. She's got summon swords. It's so good. I also love that there's a little feat, there's a little detail that I saw pointed out once there. The longer Hela spends in Asgard, the more ornate and ridiculous her helmet gets. Really? Yeah, if you put you can put a screenshot in from when she first arrives in Asgard or when she first guy comes back, compared to right at the end of the film, and the hell the antlers just get bigger and more powerful. Like just like, yeah, go on, Kate Blanchett. I think it's a lot like I forget the name of the guy now. You can look him up. He was this Japanese um, like warlord. I think it's like it's Honda Takatsu, something like that. And he basically was famous on these giant deer antlers on his head, which he wore specifically in battle so everyone knew where the fuck he was. <laughs> and he was like, I am so confident in my ability to whoop ass that I want the enemy to know exactly where I am on the battlefield. And the reports of people, like, you know, immediately surrendering they mo the moment they saw these deer antlers like entering the fray because they just saw on the top of their screen for the battle just like the legendary warlord big dick g has entered the battle because i fuck this so i think you've done well there establishing how powerful darwin is in the comics yes so let's meander over that's a good way to describe it yeah <laughs> to x-men first class yeah and discuss the film version where he gets killed by, as mentioned, someone putting a marble in his mouth. Adapt to this. And there were critics of the movie that said, it's impressive even by Hollywood's low standards of like, you know, how they portray black actors in movies that they even managed to kill off the, a literally unkillable black guy in this movie before anybody else. <laughs> The idea behind that scene is not they're not killing him off because he's black. They're killing him off to establish how powerful the like the villain is. Yeah. It's, it's a common trope in fiction where how powerful is the villain we're fighting? Oh, he kills the most powerful member of our team. How we have to work together to defeat him is what happens in that movie. But it's just it's hilarious that it's an extension of that show the black guy dies first. And like you kill off the literally unkillable black guy. And I think a great way I saw it summed up is Rod Hilton, who does the like abridged scripts for movies. Look, your power's hard to explain and you're black. Don't count on surviving this movie. And like, as cynical as that is, I think it's like, it's so fucking true, isn't it? Because there's probably people furiously typing in the comments right now, like examples of movies where the black guy doesn't die. But the fact that it's like something that's been parodied means that it's obviously something that happens a lot. Talking black guy is that true? Like there's, um, which parody movie is it where they mention It's that? not another teen movie. Yeah. Where they like make a direct reference to the fact that in those movies, they will always have a black guy, but only ever one black guy. And they have that scene where at the party and there's just another random black dude thing. He goes, oh, sorry, did you not get the memo? I'm the only black guy at this party. He goes, oh man, I'm really sorry about that dude. Like, you know, we, we must have got mixed on what's off. I'm supposed to be the only black guy at this party. Oh, <laughs> Hey man, my bad, man. Oh, why don't you take this, man? Thanks. Right. And I think they even have moments in it where the black guy acknowledges the fact that he's only there to just say black things. Or he says, I'm not here to talk to you or I can give you advice on like how you should like, you know, proceed with this decision. I'm here to just be the token black guy. It's like, oh man, that's like, that's like cutting to the fucking bone. I am the token black guy. I'm just supposed to smile, stay out of the conversation and say things like, damn, shit. And that is whack. I just think we need to clarify as well. We're not saying that Fox intentionally killed off the one black guy in the film. No, we don't think there's any malice behind it. It's just like, as many critics noted, it's like it's accidentally hilarious that they, like even an unkillable black guy can't escape the trope of the black guy always dies first. And it, to me as well, it's especially hilarious considering the characters that, you know, survive, like survive longer than Darwin, which includes the guy who screams so loud he can fly. <laughs> and the guy who hula hoops energy waves out of his dick.
when you watch that movie and you think, well, let's line up these heroes right here. We got we got Professor X. Okay, he's got vast psionic ability and he can control the mind, dominate the minds of anyone else on Earth except for Magneto. You've got Magneto, a guy the master of all my magnetism. You've got Darwin, a guy with the ability to survive anything. You've got Banshee, who screams kind of loud. And you've got some other chuckle fucks. Then you've got Havoc at the end, who has to rotate his like hips. He has to Shakira his way across the battlefield while firing energy bolts out of his body indiscriminately. Right? Who do you think's going to be the... Who's the jobber there that's going to get killed first? If you say Darwin, you win a car! <laughs> it's like, come on! For fun, should we just workshop a few ideas of the way that Darwin could have survived till the end of that movie? Well, I was surprised that they actually killed him off permanently because I thought he was going to come back later. Because obviously, they make such a big song and dance of the fact that you can survive anything. And when he says, to, like, basically to the audience and to camera while winking, what's your power? Adapt to survive, baby. And it's like, okay. So he crumbles to dust in front of us. He's just going to come back. And that's like, you know, how powerful he is. It's like, no, no, he just, he's dead and he's gone. What I think should have happened is Darwin should have adapted to have the ability of medium awareness, which is the thing Deadpool has that allows him to know that he's in a comic book and a movie and realised that he's got as a hack screenwriter writing the fucking movie and just teleported out of it. It's like, as soon as they meet him, he should have looked direct to camera and went, you know what, folks, fuck this and teleported off. The thing that pissed me off most about it, though is that he doesn't even die in a cool way. He just crumbles to dust. Like, if they'd have shown him dying, getting hit by a fucking bomb or some shit, okay, I can buy that. His mutant ability doesn't give him the ability to survive that. Even though, like, you know, in this same series of films, we've seen Wolverine survive an atomic bomb. Fine. But no, they just put a marble in his mouth and he crumbles to dust. It's like, what? What is this? Is this tuxedo? Is, that, is he drinking that water from Tuxedo that makes you turn into a dust man? What's this fuck about? Why do you bring up a Tuxedo every week? it's a shit movie, and I just realised the other day that like, the main good guy in it, other than Jackie Chan, is just like Lucius Malfoy. It's so bad, the fact that they make such a... They, get, they make such a huge deal out of the fact my ability is like... It's adapt to survive and then kill him off. And the, the guy who kills him off isn't even cool. He's not even a good bad guy. Because he like, isn't his thing like storing energy inside himself. Yeah, he absorbs all energy and can then project it outwards, I think. Yeah, which is a mutant ability, isn't it? And isn't Darwin's mutant ability? Like, and let's just say he's got the mutant ability to copy other mutant abilities. Might he just copy his ability? Yeah. Yeah. Well, da Darwin, like, as you said with the death example, he's clearly able to adapt to be the same as what's attacking him, so yeah. he can't be killed by it. So surely Darwin could have gained the ability to also absorb energy and done the same thing. Well, it's the same thing they do with, um, what's it, Quicksilver. Yeah. Like in the same fucking series of movies. Like, he's so powerful that they almost immediately have to get rid of him because otherwise there is no threat. Or there's no credible threat because why not just bring him in? Yeah. Like, that's, like, the scene, like, the idea behind Darwin is similar to, like, that scene, the slow motion scene, where it's, it's so cool that... I don't think they have a writer on staff skilled enough to explore it fully without it being ridiculous. Which is why it's like, you know what, fuck it. It's hard to justify why he doesn't just like transform into the Hulk and beat everyone to death. And let's just kill him off. So even if you want to argue that in the specific universe created by the X-Men movies, like, you know, people like Hela don't exist. You've still got like Phoenix. You've still got Magneto. You've still got mutants capable of some really terrifyingly powerful feats. And you've got Darwin, and the only cool thing we see him do is stick his head in a fish tank. <laughs> it's like, even fucking Banshee gets a cooler scene than he does, and he screams. His power is just being scared of falling. Oh. It's so dumb. It's, oh God, it's just so baffling. And you know what? I'm glad that universe is dead. Fuck it.